I gotta get better at this plant slap. My name is Andrew. You might recognize me from the show Worth It, where I eat foods at different price points with my pals Steven and Adam. Today I'm gonna be recreating one of my favorite dishes I ever had on Worth It, fancy ranch and tofu nuggets. Wait a second, Andrew. You never ate nuggets and ranch on Worth It. That's partially true. So in the double cheeseburger episode, we go to a place called Burger Lords, which does a lot of vegan and vegetarian interpretations of classic fast food dishes. In particular, they have these amazing tofu nuggets and vegan fancy ranch. That's what they call it. It's actually called Fancy Ranch, which I think is pretty spectacular. Oftentimes on the show, we'll eat foods that don't make it in the final cut of the video. Great opportunity to show you some previously unaired footage. Oh, that's so good. When you think of a meatless version of a chicken nugget, it's not obvious where it's getting its deliciousness from. I think that these recipes explore something that I'm really interested in, which is the fundamentals of why something tastes good. Holy sh Nuggets are a little weird. They're a weird food when you think about it. Also ranch. What is ranch? Shard of ice just went into my mouth. It was startling. So to start, I'm gonna call Fred from Burger Lords to get a little bit more information about these recipes. Hey Fred, how's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good. Last time on Worth It, we were trying to double cheeseburgers, but we also had these incredible tofu nuggets, as well as uh -huh. this this ranch. It's ranch yeah. dressing, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's ranch dressing. A lot of what we do is about nostalgia, so recreating mm -hmm. familiar food, and there are things that we make from scratch, like our recipes. How do you achieve a really delicious nugget? Um, I think the most important part is for the nugget skin, I guess you would call it. I mean, it's not skin, like the nugget batter. Yeah. But it's super crunchy, flavorful. It's like cavernous and has all of the little cracks in it. And then the tofu is that, it, the tofu is actually seasoned really well. So we break it down and process it. It has um, dry mushrooms for umami flavor. And then it actually has something called chicken spice. Mm. But it's like a salt blend, but there's no chicken in it. It just it says chicken spice. I've checked, you know, multiple times. <laughs> but that kind of helps push it over the top. You're getting flavor through the whole thing. I, I, I look forward to making these nuggets. Awesome, yeah. And let me know if you need any help or anything, just like text me or email me. First stage is going to be assembling the tofu into nugget shape with some flavoring ingredients. So the first ingredient we're gonna deal with is actually one that I already have, dried shiitake mushrooms which I personally use in things like soups. This is what we're dealing with here. These may in fact be porcini mushrooms. I'm not sure, I, I threw away the label. We're gonna take these mushrooms and actually grind them up into a powder so it can flavor the entire nugget. Ooh, I have created like a mushroom sawdust. We need to crumble the tofu. This is a really annoying packaging. There's a lot of liquid here. Okay, here we have our tofu. Look at that. Do I like tofu? I do. Unfortunately, my introduction to tofu was with poorly executed health food. And it wasn't until I had Chinese dishes like mapo tofu that I came to really love it. So my instruction was to use firm tofu. I'm gonna break it apart into the texture of ricotta cheese. I will add our mushroom dust. The next ingredient is chicken seasoning. A blend of seasonings, salt, garlic, paprika, turmeric, sugar, onion, white pepper, cumin, black pepper. We also have monosodium glutamate, MSG, which has gotten a bad rap in the past for being like this artificial thing that could get you sick. Those myths have been debunked. It's really no worse for you than regular table salt. And in fact, it's a thing that naturally occurs in a lot of foods high in umami, like Parmesan cheese, tomatoes, fermented food, seaweed. <clears throat> It does have this flavor combination that I associate with chicken. Ooh. You know what it tastes like? Chicken flavored instant ramen plus a nacho cheese Dorito. I mean, it definitely looks like Dorito dust. Okay, and then the recipe also calls for a little bit more salt and black pepper. Okay, it's funny, I do really associate this smell with chicken. It's kind of like the pumpkin spice fallacy where people think that pumpkin spice stuff has pumpkin in it or that that flavor is pumpkin, but really it's the spices that flavor pumpkin and not pumpkin flavor. I'm also gonna add more tofu because I didn't do the directions right. This is the good stuff. 
Okay, should cut this whole part out. Mm. Okay, it's not my favorite sensation. It's so wet. This is supposed to be a half inch. There's really no other binding agent here? Have I, oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, I need to text Fred to make sure that this is okay. I just texted Fred, he said, this is it. Okay, so these are supposed to be about half an inch thick. Remind myself of what that is. This is too thick. Man, I love any food that is in the take a homogenous squishy mixture and put it into a shape category. Like making meatballs. Okay, so these nuggets now have to go in the freezer for 24 hours before they can be breaded. See you tomorrow. I may actually have to rearrange some stuff in my freezer. Okay, so we're breading the nuggets. The first thing we're gonna do is make a vegan buttermilk to dip the nuggets in before dredging them in flour. An energy egg replacer. When I was looking for this in the store, I was looking for a liquid. Did not expect to have it be a powder. This contains stuff like potato starch, tapioca, which is gonna be doing some of the uh, thickening action required to make this like a buttermilk. Absolutely zero odor off of that. 100% zero. Something actually Adam told me is that I, I smell things too much. It's like, a, it's like a habit of mine. Okay. Chef Marito makes a second appearance. I made salmon for dinner last night. Put a little Chef Marito on the crispy skin. Amazing. Soy milk. I was supposed to shake this. Main liquid component of this buttermilk is soy milk, which I usually don't buy because I don't think it's particularly tasty. However, we went to Taiwan for worth it. We had that soy milk, the first dumpling restaurant. Wow, big time wow. It's similar satisfaction to having a, a, a milkshake, truly. I tasted this, it's not the same. What do we got now? A little Dijon. We're gonna do a... I'm just gonna eyeball it. A couple tablespoons of mustard. Mustard is really pretty freaking good. I love mustard, wow. Well, these are two things I never thought I'd be whisking together. Distilled vinegar, got it. I'm looking at dairy and I'm smelling vinegar. I'm having flashbacks of the pie episode. Ooh, you know, the smell's not pleasant currently. Okay, liquids going into the dry. Shall I taste? Not very pleasant. Now also occurs to me that I've never tasted regular buttermilk. Not really sure what my point of reference is supposed to be. Next up, we're gonna be making a flour dredge to bread the nuggets in. Wipe the uh, dust out of this. It's clean. Everything's very clean in my house. Pepper, milled by hand. Salt, cayenne pepper. And the last thing here is Old Bay. Old Bay is like this iconic American seafood seasoning. Its ingredients are celery salt and paprika, salt and pepper, basically. That, 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 that's entirely it. I think I just realized for the first time that Old Bay just smells like celery. Really makes me feel like I'm doing some kind of like witchcraft, you know? The last instruction is to add a little bit of this buttermilk to this flour. So I'm basically just, the, the goal here is to make clumps in the flour so that those clumps can then stick to the outside of the nugget, giving it more texture. This is very satisfying. This has a very similar satisfaction to like playing in mud as a little kid. Time to get the frozen nuggets. Wow, they look extremely unappetizing. But that's what they look like. Look at that. Kind of like oatmeal cookies, right? Pretty weird. I dunk. Mmm. Then this goes here. There you go. That's a freaking nugget. I mean, you, you, you deep fry that? How could that not taste good? All right, they will freeze for another 24 hours. So we're making Burger Lord's Vegan Ranch, which they call Fancy ranch. What are the key flavor components of ranch? Like, why does it taste so good? It's number one, the herbs, dill, parsley, tarragon, and just a mix of that with the onion and garlic. I mean, it tastes like a ranch. Like, you, I like imagine myself on the bottle of Hidden Valley. Like, it's, it's that feeling, you know, when, when you have that. Yeah. Vegan mayonnaise. What really distinguishes it from regular mayonnaise is that regular mayonnaise is oil and eggs emulsified together. And this is primarily oil and then other things to stabilize its emulsion, like soy protein. Okay, and the rest of this is pretty straightforward. There's garlic powder, onion powder, there's a little bit of plain salt, white vinegar. I'm mixing this up now. Doesn't that look good? And then lastly, there's a bunch of herbs. First we have tarragon. 
Uh-huh, okay. Here's all you need to know about tarragon. Tastes like licorice. All right, here we go. Tarragon. Next, we're gonna do eight grams of dill. Dill is one of my favorite herbs. Dill shows up in a lot of Ukrainian cuisine, which is the cuisine of my family. Dill is kind of unlike any of the other herbs. We won't do the super thick parts of the stem, although those are perfectly edible. How do you describe dill if grass was delicious? It's the one that is most classically associated with the flavor of ranch. Last but not least, parsley. Herbs might be my favorite category of food. Is that a dumb thing to say? Okay, this is our ranch. Ooh. <laughs> it's funny, it just immediately started smelling like what I associate ranch to be. Wow, fancy ranch. It's very fresh tasting. I'm ready to start deep frying. I've got my Dutch oven here about halfway full of oil. This is what they look like. I'm actually fairly nervous for this. If this is the documentation of my apartment burning down, please show it to no one. Here goes nothing. Seems okay so far. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, look, it's getting nuggety already. Hell yeah. Can you see that camera too? These are giant nuggets. <laughs> the first time I appreciated just how giant these nuggets really are. Okay. At this precise moment, I'm convinced that if you really want an excellently made tofu nugget, you should go to Burger Lords. Frying at home is very troublesome. <laughs> oh yeah, now it's getting really golden. I think this one looks particularly good. That, they look like nuggets. Adam, you're about to receive a text message from me. I bet your response will just be a single exclamation mark. Frying foods is one of these things where you think it's done, but you should really just wait another 30 or 40 seconds and then you're like, oh, there, there it's done. Okay, we've done frying. It's time to try the nuggets. Is this in the shot? My nuggets? Look at these suckers. I think these look pretty close. Okay, nugget into ranch. Yes, look at that nugget, huh? These are huge. Mmm, wow. Oh, those are good. I'm thrilled with how these came out. In my opinion, they are far superior to regular chicken nuggets because the inside is a much softer texture. So you have this a way bigger contrast between the outside and the, the filling inside. Adam always says that the inside is like the texture of scrambled egg. I kind of have to agree. I'm going to fry up some fresh ones for Adam drive them over to him and see what he thinks. These these nuggets are huge. Yeah, is it, aren't the Burger Lords ones pretty big? They're big, but these are like, I don't know if you can even call these nuggets. So what else is going on at Burger Lords right now? With quarantine and trying to get the restaurant back in a rhythm. We were able to do a few special projects. We're making meals for senior citizens. We partnered with a shelter in Skid Row to provide meals for homeless. Just recently, we partnered with some friends to do a fundraiser burger for NAACP Legal Defense Fund. It's giving us some time to reflect and be able to, you know, integrate a more charitable aspect to the restaurant. 